Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. In a very, very different setting today, I'm actually in my dining room. This table has an assortment of items on it. The first in front of me are what I'm about to be using. This is a jigsaw we're midway through. Now, obviously I can't move this. Not ideal that it's on the table. I wouldn't have it here if I could, but it's a Harry Potter jigsaw, so gotta let it off. I also have my pineapple juice. It looks like an alcoholic beverage. It is not because it is only midday. Or is it? And I thought today this video could be a little bit different. So instead of doing like a Q&A or a assumptions video, which I do want to film very soon, I thought we'd just do a general like chatty, I discuss topics that you guys want me to discuss whilst I do some DIY crafting, hence why this is in front of me. So I'm gonna call this like DIY and chill with me. It's a very laid back video. It's a very casual video. But I'm also wanting to get a little bit more creative. This is the kind of stuff I absolutely love doing and I never usually have time to do. So I thought whilst we're in isolation, I can make the best of two things and film it at the same time. So there are two things I'm gonna be doing. One of them involves customizing a pair of jeans and the other involves customizing this jacket with a load of Disney themed sew on patches. These are actually heat transfer patches, but I'm gonna sew them all on just so that they definitely stay on the jacket. So I have an abundance of these here, but before we get properly started, before I move into this section, we're gonna do the jeans because I did those first and I filmed it outside so they'd have time to dry. So let's cut to past Molly. Right, this is not the best lighting, but I thought given that I'm gonna do this outside so that I don't make a mess, we'll just chill, we'll just sit, whatever background noise happens, happens. And I have my jeans here and also a pot of acrylic paint as well as that i also asked for you guys on instagram to send over like topics that you want me to discuss and things that i could chat about whilst i do this and i'm also very aware that my neighbors are probably all in the garden and they're probably gonna hear this so i hope they're enjoying that um, but basically yeah i've seen a lot of people on tiktok dyeing jeans painting jeans and before i did youtube that was the kind of creative stuff that i did just like for a fun time so i thought yeah we'll go back to that i have found some acrylic paint which is what the girl on tiktok was using my mum says acrylic paint might not work and that I probably need fabric paint but obviously I don't have any fabric paint so we're just gonna hope and keep our fingers crossed that it does work. This is a cheap pair of jeans that I actually wear all the time. These were £12 from Primark and I thought if I'm gonna ruin them this is probably the best pair to ruin so decided that I'm gonna paint probably just one of the back pockets and I think I know how I'm gonna do it but I'll leave that as a bit of a surprise. Right now this is all we need so I'm gonna mark it off with masking tape first. This is a pathetic roll of masking tape that we had in the garage. So this is what they now look like i've just masking taped off the pocket so that i can basically paint like all around it and the first thing i'm going to do is paint the entire thing white i don't know why we've got this massive thing of white acrylic paint found some old paint brushes and i'm just going to paint the whole pocket ah there's a plane flying over where's that plane going you can't go anywhere mate so as i said i asked on instagram and i've had a read through them and a lot of the questions were like the same cracking this open i have no idea if this paint is even like in date does paint go out of date so the main one that i got to start off with was talking a lot about traveling so i thought we'd cover that first because i feel like a lot of you guys either want to know or like kind of expect me to have an answer to that and as of right now i actually have nothing booked or like sorted out obviously this whole thing has kind of ruined a lot of my travel plans for the year which is a shame but also like there's nothing i can do about it also i'm looking at my painting if you were wondering but i definitely have things that i want to be doing next year like places that i want to go i really want to travel southeast asia um when i was in australia i met so so many people that had either already traveled southeast asia or were going on to southeast asia and yeah it just made me really really want to do it bali is high on the list fiji and the philippines are high on the list but also Tom and I are looking at going to California and San Francisco, hopefully at the end of this year, maybe not, who knows, for my 21st, whenever it, whenever it may happen. So that's obviously really high on the list as well. And I'd also love to go to Hawaii. I don't know whether to do that with the California trip because it's like off that coast or whether to do that with the Australia and the Southeast Asia because it's kind of in the middle of nowhere but yeah they are the aims I really want to get the bulk of my like traveling done in the next like year and year or two and then I want to focus on like saving up obviously for like a house and stuff but right now that is most of my savings somebody's just started hammering this paint's taking longer to like spread than I thought it would <laughs> okay so white is mainly all on now okay another question I got loads on Instagram was do you think you'll go back to uni eventually do you want to go to uni after this whole quarantine period is over have you applied to go to uni in September all of that kind of stuff and the answer to that is no I hope you don't mind the bird noises I think it's quite nice but you might not like it no the answer is no to be honest I really don't think I'll be going back to uni anytime soon if ever 
I think a lot of you guys think that the reason I'm not at uni is because I do YouTube and that's actually not the reason at all. If I didn't do YouTube, I still wouldn't be at uni. Like it wouldn't have made a difference. I would have taken a gap year. I would have worked a like regular job to save up to go traveling. Never, I don't know. It just, it kind of was half on the cards because I felt pressured to go. But right now I feel really content with the fact that I'm not there. I don't have any plans to go. It just isn't really in my life plan to be honest. I don't really want to. And that's the bottom line of it. I just don't want to. And I think that's okay for me to say. So I'm sorry if the answer you were looking for was yes, because I know loads of you loved the uni vlogs and the uni content, but no, there is no plan to return to education. I just want to travel to be honest right now, but I don't have any like high flying career ambitions that would require a degree. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is pick a color. So the kind of theme that I'm going for is like a bit of a sunset slash like evening kind of sky theme. However, I didn't have that many acrylic paints. I've got like a an art and craft cupboard and there was a lot less in it than I thought there was. So the colors we have to pick from are red, black, blue, green or yellow. Um, and I kind of wanted to do pink and purple, <laughs> but we don't have a pink or a purple and I don't even want to start trying to mix colors together. So I think I'm gonna go for like a, the reds and the yellow because I've got a couple of different shades of red and just hope that that looks okay and I think that hopefully it will do the other thing about these is that we've had these in the cupboard for literally probably about 10 years and I think the paint might have dried up so crafting with Molly oh the paint's not dried up oh my god that's been in there for about 10 years they're all also nearly empty I think I genuinely got these as a gift for like my 10th birthday okay while I'm sorting the paints out another one I got a lot of was can you talk about how you're dealing with not seeing your boyfriend whilst in ice Isolation. Uh, to start off with, I didn't really speak too much about it. Oh my god, this one's so dried up. Oh, that is not right. It's not meant to look like that. Yeah, obviously, it's really hard. Like, I hate the fact that we're not together. And I think the worst part is we live so near each other. Like, literally a five-minute walk, if that. So it means that we have seen each other just, like, either by coincidence. Like, today I just walked past him because we were both going on a run. And I was like, oh my god, hi. Yeah, it sucks. To be honest, there's not really another way of saying that it sucks. It just does suck. But the way I've been dealing with it is we've called, like, every single day he is actually still at work because his company that he works for supply stuff for like boots and other stores that have to stay open so he is still working and getting stuff out to like mm, stores that need stuff you don't think about those kind of workers technically he's not a key worker he's not a frontline worker and he doesn't have to be like he is working from home for the most part but they have to still do their job you know what i mean yeah it is a weird one it's definitely not a good time i think we're blessed because i did spend the first six weeks of the year i mean we're not blessed this makes it worse we spent the first six weeks of the year apart while i was traveling australia and we made it work and we got into like a really good routine of speaking every day but not bombarding each other um so i thought that would end when i got back from australia but sadly we've just had to continue that and like i don't know carry it on and it's like i'm still traveling because i've barely seen him this year at all i mean so many people are in the same situation so many people are in worse situations yeah so just stay at home so that we can all see our boyfriends and girlfriends sooner right i'm going in with the darkest red at the top to like fade it down into a sunset. I'm gonna focus so I'll get back to you when it's done. I don't know why my memory card just had like a massive error and shut my whole camera down. We're back and I was saying a lot of you guys asked for recommendations on TV shows to watch or things that I've been watching, what have I been enjoying and I'm going to reel them off quickly because I don't love listing things but I've recently been watching The Imagineering Story which is on Disney Plus. You guys know that I love Walt Disney World, I absolutely love it so so much and basically it's like a look back at how they built all of the parks and how all of the Disney parks came to be what they are today and stuff. It's really interesting, it's like a behind the Scene. sorry that i am looking down you know what i'm doing and then i've also been watching the split on bbc iplayer that's really good it's about like um a law firm she's like a divorce lawyer and then i've also been watching a little bit on and off um a show on netflix called designated survivor my parents have been watching it they really like it and then i've also been continually still watching waterloo road uh, i'm now on series seven so i reckon i've probably watched about no 140 episodes of that but i have been watching it for about a year so it's taking me a while i get i go through phases of like getting bored of it. They're my recommendations and my current favourites and I have had a couple of people ask me for book recommendations too so I've just finished a book called The Man Who Didn't Call and that is definitely a recommendation. It has such a good plot twist. I actually don't even think that this has gone that badly. Also ignore the joggers, I'm living in joggers. What's new? I'm gonna leave it out here to dry, but I'm gonna peel off the masking tape first just so that we can get a bit of a reveal. And it's not my finest piece of work, but I've never painted onto clothing before and I actually don't think that it's that bad. Let's have a look. Oh, I'm a bit nervous for this. Ah, Masking tape's done a great job actually. Oh, I love that. I actually think that looks sick. 
it's that bird all right i'm really happy with that i'm gonna leave that out here to dry i'm not gonna do the other just because i think that it adds to the effect that it's just one yeah well, we're gonna move on to craft number two and now we have moved back inside guys i'm gonna move on to the jacket i'm so excited about this this is the denim jacket i have here it is white denim i bought this from boohoo and it was 12 pounds which i thought was amazing they had it in the sale and i got it in a size 12 so that it was a little bit too big for me um, and then I ordered, I think, about 22 sew-on patches off eBay. So I was watching The Imagineering Story, which is what I was just speaking about outside, and they had some really cool Disney-themed clothing, and I was like, oh my god, I really want that. So I started looking for this specific sweatshirt, and I couldn't find it online, and then I saw loads of people on Depop reselling clothing that they'd customised to have Disney characters on, and I thought, oh my god, I'll just make my own. So I found this eBay seller, I'll put her name on the screen and link it below, because I actually can't remember her name off the top of my head but i bought so many characters let me tell you so i'm gonna go through them so you can properly see before i start sewing we've got nemo lightning mcqueen marie from the aristocat goofy stitch pluto i love this one olaf from frozen a tiny little mickey mouse a slightly bigger Minnie Mouse, quite a lot bigger Dumbo, Eeyore with an E, personal favourite, love Eeyore, Flounder from The Little Mermaid, and then we have Donald Duck and Daisy Duck. So these are the patches that I'm going to be sewing on primarily to the back of the jacket. I do actually have a GCSE in textiles. Textiles was my best subject in school, and I used to sew all the time. I would just like make clothes. I absolutely don't do that anymore. I can't even re really remember how to use a sewing machine. It's been about four years. But I thought today we'll fall in love again with what I used to want to do. I used to want to be a fashion designer. Now I definitely don't. But <laughs> customising a jacket is still on the agenda. First thing I'm going to do is like mark out on the jacket where all of the things are going to go because I don't just want to start sewing them randomly. Whilst I do this, I'm going to pick another topic. This is hard actually. This fabric's difficult to like lay out. God, I feel like I'm doing my GCSE. Let's hope that spill this bright orange drink on it. In fact, I know what, I'm going to move the drink away from it because I just don't trust myself. So the next thing that I got a lot of, I'm just looking through my Instagram. Somebody said, what is your opinion on the north-south divide? And I think that is such a good question because I never ever get asked that, but it's such a big thing in my life. Somebody said, the person that asked it said specifically in your industry. Such a good question, right? So if you're watching this and you've never really had any real reason to leave the town you're in, you'll probably never have realised that there is a north-south divide because until I moved to Leeds, I didn't really realise that there was one. And obviously in Leeds, it's still the north. So we were like, hey, northerners. But there was a gap between the north and the south. Do you know what? Especially in the industry I work in, I absolutely hate it. Like properly, I really, really hate it because you get so, so much stigma because you're northern or because you've got a Yorkshire accent or because you've got a northern accent or a Geordie accent. And people are so quick to make judgments about you. I think I'm pretty lucky in the sense that my accent isn't too strong and nobody's ever like really said that I sound like common or anything. Definitely in my line of work, I get stuff like, oh, it must be such a nightmare living up there. Oh, it must be awful being so far away from London. Oh, I don't know how you cope with having to commute that far. Things like that all the time. Spoken to me from people that are actually really professional and really high up in the jobs that they do. And I'm just like, just what you're saying is like a little bit rude. I know you're thinking that you're being like relatable and that it's like, kind of a compliment to be like oh like woe is you kind of thing but like no because woe isn't me like i quite like living up here i don't think i'd ever move down south i used to want to live in london and london is the only exception to that rule but generally as a rule and i'm biased because i'm from here but i think people from the north are just nicer usually it's such a bizarre one because my friendship group are filled with like half of us are from the north half of us are from the south and obviously it's different when they're your friends but as a general rule of thumb all of the opportunity better jobs better pay are all in the south they're not in the north because the north has a history of being like working class all of the towns in the north are like ex factory towns or mill towns and stuff like that and that's absolutely fine but that isn't the case anymore like it's not still the turn of the century do you know what i mean like they need to move on a bit and i hate people that still have that stereotype that the north is just like common and cheap and like it just really really winds me up so i don't like it i don't think that professional people should segregate you based on if you're from above birmingham because like it doesn't make a difference good question though interesting one i would love to know your thoughts on it and i think if you're from the midlands you're really lucky because you can kind of fit into either category i'll get back to you when i've sorted this out are you going or yeah, I'm going out. Where's Lottie? Oh, here we go. I'm amazing. That's brilliant. Bye. Bye. Close the door, please.
Guys, we have returned. So, I said that those patches were iron-on patches, but that I was gonna sew them on. Then I realized just how long that would take for me to sew them on, so I've ironed them on, but I am still going to just tack the ones that are a little bit bigger that might come off, or that have like little arms or legs that are gonna probably come loose quicker, because I don't trust ironing things on. However, I think that this looks sick. Like, I really, really like it. I've sewn them on in this order, so there's like more at the bottom, couple at the top, and then there's Minnie Mouse up here. And then I've also sewed this E onto the sleeve here. So it's very patchy. It's like a lot of different things going on. They're kind of just all over the place. Um, but I actually think it looks really cool. Obviously, this isn't everybody's taste. A lot of people don't like Disney, especially not Disney-themed clothing. But I don't care. <laughs> so whilst I just tack on the bigger ones, so for example, Dumbo here is huge. So I'm just going to like sew down his ears. In fact, that's already coming up, so. I thought we'd answer another question. Yeah, your needle and your thread out for the boys. I've gone mad. I actually think we already knew that. I think I'll need a really sharp needle to go through this denim. Whenever I do anything crafty in the house now, especially sewing, I get so scared that the dog is gonna like run up to me and like I'll accidentally stab her with the needle or something or she'll accidentally stand on it while I put it down or like eat it because that's something she would do. Is that what it's like when you have a child? So the next question that I got a lot of was can you talk about how you deal with hay or how you find your whole job being online now and stuff like that basically around YouTube and I've answered a lot of these kind of questions before so I'm not going to go into loads of depth but something I did want to discuss recently just because it's been happening more and more was like nitpicky comments and people that jump to conclusions without really knowing the full story. I think this whole lockdown thing has turned everybody into like a secret police officer and everybody is constantly trying to catch you out or to point out something that you're doing wrong and I know that a lot of people do just think they're trying to help. Then you genuinely maybe just don't realise but when I open like my fifth DM of the day being like oh my god you shouldn't have let Lottie like eat chocolate when I put a story up of the dog with some easter eggs separate like completely separate she wasn't anywhere near them and I get people being like hope you didn't feed her that chocolate's dangerous for dogs like I know that and I know that you think you're trying to help but my friend Liv actually pointed it out to me the other day and was like it's so sad that you have to say on your story like obviously you weren't feeding the dog just because there are those idiots out there that are so nitpicky that they try and like catch you out in your DMs and I was like honestly Liv you don't even realize how often this happens like people are constantly on at me for something or another and it's only really recently that I've noticed it I either wasn't opening the DMs before or it was happening less and I think people being on their phones more is as I just said turning people into like little police officers like just unless you know the entire story which is very unlikely that you do if it's online just back off a bit and just be a nice person don't criticize somebody if they've I don't know ordered something online that you don't like or if they've i don't know bought something from the shops that maybe in your head isn't essential or if they've done an online delivery when other people should be having those delivery slots because you don't know the situation in their life like fully i know you think you do if you watch us a lot or if you follow us on instagram but there's a lot of people that i know away from the cameras in real life and their lives are so different not in a bad way just in like they've got a lot of stuff going on that you just don't know about and i know that there's a double-edged sword to that in that we put ourselves online so we're putting ourselves out there for hate but honestly i just think if you're one of those people that replies to stories and it's not a compliment and it's not gonna benefit the person at all don't do it like i just don't get it at all i just think that it's a really really bizarre thing to do genuinely can't think of a situation where i would ever ever comment on somebody's lifestyle choices or somebody's something somebody said even if it's a little bit out of line if i listen to something and i think oh they maybe shouldn't have said that unless it's life-changing and unless it's like actually gonna offend somebody personally i would never think of pulling them up on it because people make mistakes like my friends in real life occasionally i'll put on my like private story a screenshot of something somebody said to me online and my real friends are like oh my god do you get that kind of thing often and i'm like honestly i get that kind of thing every day and it's not always negative stuff it's like weird men in my dms or i don't know <laughs> like just unnecessary comments dumbo's ears are now firmly secure i'm pleased to inform it's quite hard to sew through these actually they're really quite thick i don't know if the girl that sells them on ebay makes them herself or if she just resells them from somebody because they're amazing if she makes these it's such a talent oh damn i'm losing it
I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I'm actually losing it. Okay, I'm going to answer one more question, I think, before we wrap this up, because I think this video has probably got quite long. If you want any other kind of DIY and chill with me, let me know, because there's definitely more stuff I want to do. I love painting. I'm not very good at it, but I like doing it. Shall we just go through some quick ones? So somebody said, what are your favourite baby names? Would you guys watch a separate video on that? Because I love watching those videos, you know, where people are like, baby names I love but wouldn't use, because I love so, so many weird names, but I definitely have never thought of filming it because I'm just kind of like, well, I'm not having a baby, so I don't know why people would watch that, but... Ah! Oh, actually, let's go with this one. A lot of people have said this. What is the first thing that you're going to do or the first thing you're looking forward to when lockdown is over? <sighs> Christ, the list is long. The very first thing. Oh my God, I actually don't know. Obviously, I think personally, everything will go back to normal in like stages. So I don't think we'll be able to like go to a pub, for example, the same day that we're like real out to see our boyfriends. I think that like things will be introduced slowly. But when everything is reopened, the first thing I would love to do this would be like my dream day. Tom and I go on a date day because I haven't properly done that with him yet this year. We'd go to Leeds and we'd have a Wagamama's because I really want a Wagamama's. And then we'd go shopping just in the town centre. And then we'd maybe go sit in a Starbucks because I miss doing that. Just mainly, to be honest, it's just restaurants. And then I really want to go clubbing. I want a night out. I really want a night out. I think when things are taken away from you, you realise how much you miss them more. So for example, day to day life, I don't really think... Oh Christ, I need a night out. But like now that it's been about five weeks since I last went properly clubbing, in fact, no, more than that. Way more than that. Oh my God, it's been about two months. I really miss it. And I think that just goes for day-to-day -day general life as well. Like you don't realise what you've got until it's gone. Hopefully we'll be a little bit more grateful when all of this is over. A little bit kinder and a little bit more grateful. That would be the aim. I'm just currently sewing Pluto's tail on, by the way, guys. You probably don't care. You're like, Molly, you could have just done a QA. and a Why are you doing weird crafting at the same time? I thought it might be calming because a lot of people have messaged me saying that their mental health isn't great right now or that like being in lockdown is making it a lot worse and a lot harder for them and that they're loving watching YouTube to take their mind off stuff. And I'm totally the same. Like, I'm not actually doing as badly as I thought I would. I thought I would be a lot more bored and a lot more like agitated with this whole thing. I thought it would really 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 get to me i think that's mainly been because i've been keeping myself quite busy and i am lucky because i can work from home and i've been doing that as much as i can but i definitely definitely understand that this is really not an easy time for everybody and i wish i could offer like proper helpful advice but other than try and stick to a routine and try and do something each day that makes you smile it's really hard to offer advice because it does just suck right now and i know that it's a really hard time if you use like day-to-day -day life as a bit of a distraction from like your own mind now is not a good time to be in that situation. Watching YouTube is a really good distraction. I've been loving doing that. People whose vlogs I've actually been really, really liking, and I said this, I think it was in a live stream the other day. I've been watching Zoe and Alfie again for the first time in a long time because I go through phases with who I watch on YouTube, and obviously I used to be a huge, huge fan of Zoe and Alfie when I was like 14. Everybody knows that. And then I kind of stopped watching for a bit, and I've just recently started watching them again. And whatever your opinion is on like the original British YouTube scene, they've been putting out some really good content that is a good distraction because it's just them vlogging their day-to-day -day life but the videos are about half an hour long and they're great to watch if you just want something to take your mind off it feel a bit like a home comfort maybe it is because I watched them when I was younger and I feel a bit like comforted by it and I think that <laughs> do you want to say hello? Just gonna sew Olaf down and then we're good. This is a long video, Christ, Molly, shut up. Question I want to ask you guys, because I definitely want more recommendations is, comment a Instagram account down below that you've been loving following recently, because I've been following some new accounts that are like, you know, motivation accounts or like quotes or uh, reasons to stay positive or just like nice, positive, uplifting accounts. Doesn't have to be specifically about what's going on right now. But yeah, comment an Instagram handle down below because I definitely, I'm trying to branch out because I don't just want to follow like, I don't know, <laughs> influencers. <laughs> Struggling sewing through this denim, it's quite thick. Especially I imagine if it ever goes through the washing machine that these might fall off, but I could be proved wrong. And there we go, I'm gonna leave it here. Right, so this is the finished jacket. I'm gonna film on a try on clip, probably tomorrow when the jeans are dry as well so I can wear it together and overlay it. This is what the jacket looks like. I'm actually really impressed with myself. I think I've done an okay job. I really love the patches. I'm saying that as if I like handmade the patches. I didn't. I've just ironed and sewn them on but I just think it looks cool. It's a little bit different and it was the influence of watching the Imagineering story on 
Disney Plus. Yeah, I know that's not going to be to everybody's taste, but I just thought it was a fun activity to do. I've seen a lot of people on Instagram, on TikTok, customising clothing, and I thought, yeah, I really want to give that a go. So, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you found it interesting and that it's been kind of chill and just easy to watch or something to put on in the background to take your mind off stuff. And if you want another one of these kind of videos where I maybe paint or I do something different, let me know, because I can definitely do that. I shall be back on Saturday with my first weekly vlog in a long time, so definitely subscribe down below so you don't miss that. If you haven't seen the video that went up on Tuesday, honestly guys, it's one of my favourite I filmed in a long time. It cracked me up. Tom catfished as me on Tinder, and it was a fun time. So that is already up on my channel if you haven't seen it. Bye guys! Maybe now I'll add the gin to this drink.